What's happening everybody, the Poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. And in this video, I have the pleasure of going over the ASUS ProArt Z790 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. This is potentially one of the best, if not the best creator Wi-Fi motherboard that is just in existence. And I do say Wi-Fi a couple of times because you probably won't even use it with this motherboard. This thing has 10 gigabit ethernet plus an additional 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and additional ports that rival those numbers too. So let's kind of get into it in a little bit. First off, I do want to say thank you to Kingston because they did send over the RAM that we're going to be utilizing for this board. This is the Kingston Fury Beast RAM. It's DDR5 RAM. So the newest standard, which is compatible with this Z790 motherboard, and it's 6,000 mega transfers. So very fast RAM. There are a couple of different standards of the DDR5 RAM. This is specifically for Intel, and Kingston does have compatible ones for AMD as well. That's the Expo standard. So when you are buying DDR5 RAM, you wanna make sure you're getting the right uh, configuration of that RAM. Basically, it's an overclock preset. So this is already set up to run at its 6,000 mega transfers on the Z790 motherboards, and then their Expo line is meant to run at, say, 6,000 speeds on the X670E Ace motherboard, something like that, which I have one over there. So very, very reliable. Then when it comes to storage, they actually did send over, <laughs> this is a four terabyte NVMe drive, PCI Gen 4.0. The read speeds are pretty ridiculous. 7,300 megs per second read speeds. We're gonna have some fun with this drive. I love this because one, it's four terabytes. So that's ridiculous in itself. That's really, really helpful for 4K and 8K video editing meaning you're not gonna to have to figure out like which drives to put your storage on, just dump all of your footage on this. I think the largest uh, I've ever had a, an entire video project was about an entire terabyte. Uh, so that was kind of a lot, it was. But um, when you have something like this, that's four terabytes, you're not worried about that. Then the beauty of this motherboard is because of its ethernet ports, 10 gigabit ethernet right here, it's easy to transfer files that are a terabyte in size basically, or projects that are a terabyte in size uh, to your NAS. Hopefully you have a NAS because remember, uh, this is just storage. Then you have hopefully a backup. A NAS is more redundancy. So I have a NAS right back here and I'll do a separate video on this. I did water quill my NAS. Um, so it actually has six, eight terabyte hard drives in RAID, what's called Z2, because I'm using TrueNAS for that. I'm going on a tangent, but this is for creators. So when you have basically started to full, fill up your drive here, full of your video projects, 3D modeling projects, whatever it may be, it may be time to dump that onto your NAS. And with six, eight terabyte hard drives in RAID Z2, which is basically RAID 6, that means that I could have, say, a hard drive fail, which I have before in the past, and I just take it out, replace it with another drive, and the system is up and running with no data loss. So that's redundancy. And then a backup, obviously, would be taking that storage uh, or that data and putting it like off-site somewhere else where it's like not online, it's not gonna be you know damaged through a lightning strike or anything like that. So that's, that's a true backup. So this is what you use for your projects. Offload it to a NAS for some redundancy, and then the very important stuff, back it up somewhere else, all right? And then what is going to be the uh, brains behind this? That is this. So Intel did send me their 13900K processor. This is their new high-end processor. The 13900KS did just come out. Maybe Intel will be sending me that as well, but this thing is, uh, it's serious. So we will be opening this up very carefully. So here we go. 13900KS processor. So this is really, really good for video editing and DaVinci Resolve because it's, long story short, it's got its own iGPU on here that handles codecs better than an NVIDIA GPU or um, an AMD GPU. It, it's just that good. So if you are doing stuff in DaVinci Resolve, you may want to consider, you know, going with an Intel processor because of that and i just did not put this together well at all so let's uh let's get into what this motherboard is all about and let me try to figure this origami thing out i figured it out 
Now I'm really excited about this motherboard, not only because of the features, but the looks as well. Uh, so let's go over some of the features first. So this does have two Thunderbolt 4, they're USB-C type ports. Uh, basically that's hitting 40 gigs per second speeds uh, aggregately, it's, that's ridiculous. Plus we do have the two different ports for the ethernet. So Marvell is the 10 gig port right here and then 2.5 gig ethernet for the Intel port. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Plus uh, the PCIe Gen 5.0 support, 32 gigabits per second per lane, which is just absolutely amazing. So if you do wanna run, uh, say two 4090s on this, you can, and you're really not gonna lose any speed because even these, even though these will dumb down from 16, uh, they'll go to eight by eight, having two cards in there, but that's PCI Gen 5.0. So it's basically the equivalent of having like two 16s at uh, PCI Gen 4.0. So you're not gonna notice any, any difference whatsoever. So that's really nice. Yes, 24090s are definitely overkill. And then lots of other uh, IO that we're gonna go over. So let's go ahead and unbox this bad boy. And we'll get into that stuff over there. Very shiny indeed. So I always like to go over the peripherals first. So, oh dear God, it has a, Let's, let's not speak of that. We do have QR codes, very nice, cool. Uh, this, I like the look of this manual. That's, that's a nice black and, and bronze slash gold manual. Always read the manual. I always suggest reading it forwards and backwards, upside down and all that good stuff because there's gonna be features about this motherboard that you will not even know exist uh, just from like reading the outside of the, of the box, for example. And then we have uh, more paper cool and then over here all the goodies so let's go through some of the goodies uh, okay so I love this what this is this is for your front panel connector this makes it so nice and easy to basically install the motherboard in a case you just have all those front panel prongs right there and you just slide this whole big thing right onto the motherboard done I love that uh, these are going to be for the NVMe drives, easy lock-in mechanisms, very, very quick and easy, basically, access for your NVMe drives. And what is this? This is um, a paddy thing. Good. You know, you can use those for different areas of the motherboard. We'll get into that. Um, we're going to call this swag. This is the Asus ProArt uh, ruler. Very, very useful for, for ruling. And uh, let's see here. More patty things. Basically use these patty things for, um, you can use them for NVMe drives, you can use them for uh, GPU stuff. Um, I mean, they call it L LDPE4 Colexo. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. But I've used them in, in different areas, just wherever you need padding. Uh, SATA cables, which cool that they supplied them. No, I will not be using them. But for content creators in general, if they're gonna be using, uh, you know, spinning Rust drives or SATA SSD drives, cool, you're gonna need these. Me personally, my spinning Rust is over there on my NAS, so I don't need these at all. And I'm strictly gonna be using an NVMe drive. So this, I have no idea what this is. That's why we're gonna read the manual. Interesting. And then, um, cool, they, they included a, uh, Display port cable. I've never seen a motherboard include a display port cable. I'm very confused. That's why I'm gonna read the manual. Maybe there's something special that is going on that I'm not aware of. All right, so those are the goodies. And now let's open up the motherboard here. Hmm, I did kind of tear things, but that happens. There we go. The Asus ProArt Z790 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Oh, there's a little round thing. I wonder if that little plug thing goes right there. But I'm gonna read the manual. So we have the PCI Gen 5.0 slots right here. Uh, plenty of NVMe storage as well. This is gonna be wonderful. DDR5 slots for the RAM. And this is where the 13900K is gonna go. Or maybe even the KS. This is kind of cool right here because this is actually, uh, if you plug in power right here, 
That enables this USB-C front panel port to then deliver 60 watts of power delivery, which is really nice. So if you need to power a laptop or like really quickly charge a cell phone or a laptop, that is going to enable that. So that's, that's nifty. I also like how uh, these are at 90 degrees. So that makes it very helpful for cable management for these. Uh, sometimes when this is at 90 degrees, it makes it a little difficult depending on the case. So I'm gonna potentially try this in a couple of different cases to see exactly how this looks, how I wanna basically do the cable management. So we'll see with that. And then we have uh, all of our you know, SATA and USB uh, ports right here, which makes things nice and convenient. You know, th that's pretty average to have them down here. And uh, then this is what we wanna start to look at, the rear IO. So let's go down the list here. We have two DisplayPort ins, which are really nice. So that will lead for some very interesting PC setups. HDMI right here. On the bottom, we have these two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So you can charge with these about 15 watts, but the real claim to fame is the speed. These will be 40 gigabit per second speeds as aggregate. Then we have six type A ports. These are USB 3.2 Gen 2, so 10 gigabit per second speeds on all of those ports right there. Then 10 gig Ethernet, that's the Marvell controller. 2.5 gig Ethernet, that's the Intel controller. The Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 6E. And then a very robust sound system as well as a BIOS flashback button. Makes it nice and easy. So if you have been out of the Intel processor game for a little bit, you might be a little confused at this. This 13900K actually has 24 cores, 32 threads. Eight of those cores are actually their performance cores, the main cores you're familiar with, but 16 of those cores are actually the efficiency cores. So you have eight cores, and that's hyper-threaded, so that's 16, and then 16 of these efficiency cores, which uh, they're basically efficient. They're smaller cores, they're not as fast, they require less wattage, therefore it all adds up to 32 cores. Uh, some games work very well with that, some don't. Uh, video editing can work very well with it. You know, some may not take advantage. So really kind of do your research to make sure that this is the type of processor that your system actually needs. Overall, this processor is amazing. So the first thing that we're gonna do is press this down. That thing comes up. This will lift up just like that. And then this is what the 13900K looks like. So all the pins are right on the motherboard right here. So we're just going to gently place this down. Little groove right there, 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 and there. So you can't really get this wrong at all. Uh, and then you're gonna go ahead and plop this down. That'll pop off. Just go ahead and take it. And then squeeze this down. And there you go. Next up is the RAM. Now, some motherboards will allow you to move these clips downward to kind of open it up. This one, the clips actually only open up from the top. So it's best just to kind of feel it, don't force it. If they don't pop open like this, then don't worry about it because you only really need one side to clip in. The RAM we are installing is the Kingston Fury Beast RAM. So this is DDR5. 6,000 mega transfers is the speed. This motherboard actually will go up to 7,200 overclock, so this is gonna work perfectly fine. And with DDR5 RAM, the notch right here is actually offset. So there's only one way you can put this in. So if you're looking directly at the slot, you're like, oh, okay, it fits. If you're doing it like this, it's obviously gonna be offset and not going to work, all right? So all you have to do is slide it in until you hear a click on both sides. And we're gonna do that for each and every one. The click is gonna happen nicely each and every time. I love the click. And this looks really nice. I like this RAM by Kingston Fury. Can't wait to see how the RGB looks. And there we go. Next up, we have to install the NVMe drive, the Kingston Fury 4 terabyte PCI Gen 4.0. Yes, 7,300 megs per second read speeds. This thing is ridiculous. And the main thing that people always get wrong with installing these is they don't read the manual. Manual's here for a reason. And so in the manual, 
you will actually see that there are multiple spots for installing a drive like this. And some of the spots may conflict with some of the other things that you want to plug into your PC. Hence this line right here. Now, this is basically saying that this slot, this one right here, uh, is going to basically share bandwidth with other devices. So I don't want to deal with that. And I'm just going to install it right here, which basically talks directly to the CPU. Long story short, Intel 13th and 12th gen processor. See, right there. So that's going to be the safe spot. That's where we're going to install it. These are very easy to take off. These are heat sinks for the NVMe drive. Nice and easy. And this will just come right off just like that. These actually do have pads right here. So these are thermal pads that will basically just snag right on to the NVMe drive to help keep it cool. And so the NVMe drive here is just going to line up with the notch and then slide down just like that. And then the clip just holds it right there. Nice and easy. And you want to take off the little adhesive sticker thing right here, which get off. Yeah. And we're just going to screw this right back on. Done. And now we're good at this stage. So we have the Kingston Fury Renegade PCI Gen 4.0 NVMe drive, four terabytes, just ridiculous. Uh, DDR5 RAM by Kingston Fury, their beast with the RGB, 6,000 mega transfers, and the Intel 13900K processor, 32 threads altogether. So eight P cores, so that's 16 threads. And then it also has 16 E cores as well. So 32 total threads for this processor. A beast for gaming, a beast for video editing, a beast for photo editing, you name it, it it'll handle it. And this ASUS ProArt Z790 <laughs> Creator Wi-Fi motherboard is just glorious. So we definitely covered a lot here. This is definitely a good video for beginners and maybe somebody that just haven't you know, experienced a build in a while. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun building in this uh, ProArt because I've always wanted to use a ProArt motherboard. Uh, because of the I.O. on the back, 40 gigs per second speeds are going to be great for transferring large video files. And then, of course, just having the 13900K processor, 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and that 4 terabyte NVMe drive, just spectacular. So next up is to put it in a case. I haven't chosen exactly which case I'm going to use yet. I have a good idea, though. Uh, pick a, uh, a GPU, so it might be a 4090, 4080, 4070 Ti. Drop a, a comment in the uh, comment section below to let me know exactly what type of GPU you would like to see in this build. And then, uh, of course, we have to you know, pick the cooling, uh, the fans for the case, uh, uh, the PSU. So there's a lot to do, uh, but it's all very straightforward, very easy. So stay tuned for the next video where we're going to knock out a lot of that. Uh, so thanks again for watching, like and subscribe, feel free to share the video, and definitely comment below with any questions you may have, I'll try to answer them, but always make sure you read the manual for your motherboards, a lot of nifty information in there. So until next time, stay chilly, or warm, or wherever you are in the world. I don't I have no idea why I said that. That's the end of this video. Peace.